The microphone. And what do you think? Should we go and see a movie? <sighs> Moo? <sighs> Fee! <sighs> hey, you didn't type everything that I said. You should listen more carefully. And you should try using less words. <gasps> Nolik, hey. Alia? What are you arguing about? Uh, well, I was writing a letter to Johnny. I was, not you. I messed up my finger and Nolik offered to help me. I had no idea that you're such a yapper. Oh. Now I see. Tom Thomas. <laughs> Didn't you know that you can call Johnny straight from your computer? You sure? You see that picture of the phone? Just click on it. Hi. So what movie do you want to go see? Hey there. I don't care. Just not pirates and those robots. Hey, Tom Thomas, why aren't you answering me? I am answering you. Hello? Hello? Talking to the microphone. Uh, I don't have a microphone. There you go. End of conversation. All right, then talk right into there. Simka, come on. You use headphones to listen. It's a joke. It's no joke. We talk into microphones and listen through headphones. But both of these devices use a special membrane to do their job. The membrane inside of a microphone is used to capture sound that is then sent through wires as an electrical signal. And inside a pair of headphones, a membrane helps turn that electrical signal back into sound. So it turns out that a microphone and headphones are built in a very similar way, even though they are used quite differently. And so I talk right into here? Johnny, hello? Just wait a second. First, we need to plug your headphones into the hole where the microphone gets plugged in. Ah, I get it. Go ahead. Now it's a microphone. Johnny, I'm here. Can you hear? Yeah, he can hear, but you can't. Nolik, switch it over to the headphone jack. I already saw a robot. And I already saw it. No, Lick! I don't think there's anyone who didn't see it. You didn't see it? Then let's go see it. No, I don't wanna. I think the robots will be even more boring than the pirates. Do you wanna see the pirates? Make up your mind. Do you want to see the pirates or the robots? I don't want to see either one. Nolik, what are you doing? What am I doing? It's because you and Johnny don't listen to each other. I've got a good idea. You need to talk like police on their walkie-talkies. When they're done talking and they're ready for an answer, they say, over. Great idea. When we talk to someone using the telephone, there are two channels for the sound. We talk through the first channel and listen to the other person talking through the second one. But sometimes two people need to talk to each other using only one channel. For instance, sailors and taxi drivers use one channel radio sets. When a radio set's turned on, you can hear the other person talking, but they can't hear you talk unless you push a special button down. Then they'll hear you, but you won't hear them. So that means you have to take turns talking, because if everybody tries talking at once, nobody will understand anything. So then, to let people know that you're done talking and you're ready to listen to what they have to say, say over. Johnny, hello. Why don't we try talking like police on their walkie-talkies? Whenever you're done talking, say to me, over, over. All right, so are we going to the movies? Over. Nah, I don't feel like it. Why don't we go play ball instead? Over. Sounds good. Who were you talking to before? Over. Uh, uh, I can't tell you that. It's classified. And we policemen, we follow the rules. Wow, that worked out great. You two are the best. Over. Oops. 
<laughs> we try our best. Over. We do. Especially me. <sighs> I'm completely over. The Stapler. Tom Thomas gets the ball. He makes an incredible move. He's wide open. The goalie sees him and he screams in horror. He shoots and scores! Yay! Tom Thomas, stop kicking that ball. Your school concert starts in 30 minutes and I don't want to iron your pants again. All right, Mom. Just one more time, huh? No, I'm sorry. Mom said I have to quit kicking the ball. But Mom said nothing about dribbling the ball. Go, you can Tom, do Tom. it. You can do it. Yeah. Go. Special concert pants. Ugh. Yeah, how will you go now? Well, your mom does have enough time to sew them. I'm scared to even tell her about it. She said that I had to stop playing. are lightly glued together. That way you can load many staples at once instead of one at a time. And a spring pushes the staples to the front. When you push down on the arm, a metal tooth pushes the front staple down through a thin space. And the staple punches holes in the paper. Next, the pointy ends of the staple push down onto a plate. And that makes the staple bend behind the paper. And there you go. The papers are fastened. So you could say that we're sewing, but using a stapler instead of a needle. Yeah, and it works even faster. Huh? What's going on? Could it have run out of staples? There's still a lot more staples, but one of them got jammed here in the slot. Ugh. Tom Thomas, we're leaving in five minutes. Okay, Mom. So, did you get it? No. <sighs> Why don't we get Papa's to help us? Because he's really strong and he's got a pack a mat. We can do this ourselves. Tom Thomas, find something we can use to push that staple out. The stapler is not a very new invention. It's been said that the French king, King Louis XV, had a stapler made out of gold and precious gems. Unfortunately, it could only hold one staple at a time. Modern staplers are much more convenient, and people have come up with so many kinds for paper, for plywood, and even for skin. Yes, surgeons often use them during operations. Then there's the staple gun that's used to upholster furniture. And its older brother, the nail gun, can even be used to hold together the walls of a building. And here's an invention almost as important as a stapler. It's the staple remover. With its help, it's possible to remove the staples put in by a stapler. How about the screwdriver? That'll work. Look, the screwdriver fits perfectly into the slot. Ah, that's great. Now push that staple through. Only keep your fingers out of the way, or you won't finish sewing. Tadish! It's still not Tadish. You haven't fixed your pants yet. That's it. They're done. 
can say, Tom Thomas, are you ready? Of course. My idea with the stapler was smart, wasn't it? And Tom Thomas's mother won't notice a thing. Will too. Just wait till she washes them. The cell phone. Hmm. Hey, Nolik. Come on out and play. He's not allowed. He was punished. Can you tell me what you did? I grabbed a Pac-Man and I forgot to ask. How long do you have to sit there? Until Mossy and Papoose come home from their boo 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 boozness. What did you say? Business. A work trip. They're inside of your father's cell phone right now. They were busy doing repairs in there when he left the house for work. Do you know the reason why a mobile phone is also called a cell phone? Mobile phones are connected to other mobile phones with the help of special radio stations that are put on top of towers and building roofs. Each one of these stations sends signals to its own area below, and each area is called a cell. A mobile phone works anywhere it can find a nearby station that it can connect to. So as long as there is a station nearby, you can talk as much as you want. You can even move from one cell to another. And without you ever knowing it, your mobile phone will switch from one station to another one. So your conversation can keep on going, even if you're running after a bus or riding on it. Tom Thomas, hello. There you go, my dad came back home already. Hi dad, how are you? Can you believe it? It looks like I lost my phone. What do you mean you lost it? Where? I have no idea. So what? I'm gonna have to sit in here forever now? You? Our parents are missing! The phone stopped shaking a while now. We're probably already at home. Uh, uh. Not home to me. How can we ever get home to our children? Where's my Masia? Don't whine. We'll work something out. Don't worry. I got a phone. Let's give him a ring. They can't answer your call. But what if they answer us? Call him, Tom Thomas. I... Don't even think it. We're not allowed to talk to humans. We're not gonna talk to them. We're just gonna listen. We need to close the contacts. It's no use. Oh, they answered the phone. Let me talk. Papus, Masia, it's me, Simka. Simka? Yeah, Masia, where are you? In the telephone. The phone part is not what she's asking you. <laughs> oh, it smells a lot like gasoline in here. Ask your father, was he anywhere around gasoline? Dad! Dad, did you go anywhere today where it smells like gasoline? Gasoline? Uh, I had to go to the gas station. That's the place where your telephone disappeared. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, I've got... Intuition. Intuition? Intuition, huh? You know what? I'll go check. Come and check out our Fixie ringtone. Telephone is. Telephone is. It's just incredible. You see? I found it. Son, you're one clairvoyant. I didn't notice when it fell out of my pocket back at the gas station. 
My children. Oh, my Marcia. Papus. Oh, my sweeties. <laughs> so, uh, just by any chance, you think you might happen to know where I can find that nice watch I lost? No. Don't worry, there's no rush. Just use that intuition you've got. The toothbrush. Once I finish you, my top secret growth potion, I will create my own giant canine crew! And then I'll rule the... Whoa! Wow, this is super! You're better than a TV show. Oh yeah, it's fun, but it's gonna end badly. <laughs> Tom Thomas, get ready for bed. I'm going, Dad. But first, my secret recipe. We start with a bit of Carboniterus. And now a little bit of bread and butterus. And finally, beard of fumerus. Chusaka! Don't be afraid. Drink, my baby. And you'll grow ten times your size. What? It doesn't taste good? Oh, right. I forgot it needed stirring. This hypersonic mixer will do the trick. Tom Thomas, you shouldn't use what doesn't belong to you. That's your father's toothbrush. Ah! Hey, cut it out! You're acting crazy! <laughs> are a big boy, but your brain is smaller than Nullix. Why, thank you. Just go put the toothbrush back in its place. I'm like you never touched it. Nah, that's not right at all. Tom Thomas, what's up? I'm almost done, Dad. Simka, Nullix, please, I really need your help. No panicking. First, we need to understand what could have broken inside of there. An electric toothbrush is really simple, as long as you know these three parts the battery, the motor, and a very clever mechanism that connects the motor with the bristles. The whole secret to the toothbrush is right in there. That mechanism uses the spinning of the motor to make the bristles move very fast back and forth, from left to right, from right to left. And that's how it brushes your teeth. So what can we do about it? Here's what we do. First, we take out the motor, then we take the gears out, and then the mechanism. How much time do we need to do that? One or two hours. What? No! Just listen here, Tom Thomas. You need to open up the battery compartment. Wait for me right here. These are your teeth. Well, I mean, they're not your teeth, but you get what I'm saying. Nowadays, we use a toothbrush to clean our teeth, but it wasn't always that way. The ancient Egyptians used a chewed stick to scrape their teeth, while the ancient Greeks rubbed their teeth with a rag. And the Vikings, well, who knows what they used? And then, only 200 years ago, an Englishman named William Addis came up with something better. He drilled holes into a meat bone, inserted bunches of bristles into them, and there you go! The toothbrush! And here's what I need to tell you all as a fixie. That is, as a master repairman. You need to make sure to brush your teeth often, especially after eating, or you'll be getting them repaired often at the dentist. Well, is something wrong with the mechanism? No, it's fine. Is the motor burned out? No. Then what's wrong with it? You're not going to believe it. But the battery died. That's all? I know what to do. I'll put in new ones. <laughs> Your dad turned the toothbrush on. Looks like everything's fine. It's working. Ooh, way to go. Excellent. Your dad will never find out what kind of slop you mixed up with his brush. 
What slop? <laughs> How dare you, Nolik? How dare you refer to my mighty potion like this? Tom Thomas, somehow soap got all over my toothbrush. Can you explain that? Ay, ay, ay. Well, you got caught. What do you say now? <laughs> Nolik, please stop your jumping. Your head's gonna fall off. Don't worry, it won't fall off. Mm-hmm, that sounds good. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. Are you going somewhere, Tom Thomas? Me? Nowhere. Katya's coming over, so we can do our homework. I need some strawberries. Is she gonna bring the strawberries with her? You got it. And my job's to supply the whipped cream. They're so good together. Whipped cream? Do you have any? I'll go and check. Wait, for me! Suka, what do they make cream from? It's made from milk, and the milk you can get from a cow. And what about whipped cream? The cow jumps up and down like you, so the cream can get whipped up. Really? I'm joking, Nolik. I looked everywhere. We've got regular cream, but there isn't whipped cream. No problem. We can whip some up right now. Cream is thick milk with a lot of fat. If you want to make whipped cream, you need to cool down the cream, add some sugar, and then beat this mixture very well. This adds tiny air bubbles that turn the cream into a delicious white fluffy foam. But it's important not to overdo it. Or instead of getting fluffy, the cream will start getting thicker and thicker until it turns into rich, creamy butter. How are we going to whip it up? Look, there's a whisk. No! Hold on! How's that? It's not working. Maybe we need to use a different bowl or something. Do you think that a bottle would work? Hmm, that's a really good idea. Now I don't have to worry about spilling this cream anymore. Shake it with both hands. That's all. I'm just too tired. The cream looks exactly the same as when you started. You didn't try hard enough. Oh, really? Then try whipping it yourself. I got it. That's who's gonna help us. Chusaka? Yeah, awesome. Bring it down. A little more. Perfect. Open it up. <laughs> Yeah? But why can't you? What a shame. It's fine. Come on over anyway. Oh, you can't reach us. You can't reach us. Oh. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, I'm sure that at least we got the cream whipped up. Oh, see that, Zuka? There's no cream left. Just some yellow stuff. It's butter, I'm sure. We overdid it. People make so many different things out of milk, like cream or butter or frosting for cakes and cupcakes. With dry milk, sugar, and boiling water, you can make condensed milk. And if you make it cold, brrr, you get ice cream. And if the milk gets sour, no problem. Humans make all sorts of foods out of sour milk, like yogurt, sour cream, kefir, and buttermilk. 
If you drain off the extra liquid from sour milk, you'll have cottage cheese. And by boiling milk a special way, you can make all sorts of different cheeses. There are so many kinds of cheeses made throughout the world that it's hard to even count them all. And even certain kinds of chocolate can't be made without milk. You must agree that plain old ordinary milk is just one super magical extraordinary thing. It's just awful, guys. What, Katya's not coming over? She's coming over, just without the strawberries. She didn't know that her grandmother had already used up all of them to make some jam. So you're telling us that we don't need any whipped cream? Right, Katya's bringing a cake. And she said that we'll need butter. She wants to make frosting out of it. Butter? I don't know if we have any. We got plenty. The keyboard. Five, four, three, two, one. Ready, Ready or not, not, here we come. And where is he hiding this time? Tom Thomas! Yoo-hoo! Tom Thomas? You didn't forget about your grandma's birthday, did you? No. Oops, I did. We found you this time. Hey, that's not fair. It was my mom that found me, not you. Then go and hide again. Not now. I have to draw a birthday card for... Oh! My grandmother. So. We need one clean sheet of paper. When's your grandma's birthday? Tomorrow. But your card won't get there on time. Oh, then what can I do? Come on and use your noggin. Pick up the phone, give her a ring. Your grandmother will be really happy to hear your voice. No, we've got a tradition. We send each other birthday cards. And what's the internet for? Why don't you send off an electronic card to her? Simka, that's genius. Oh, this one's cool. Now go ahead and type your message. The letter D isn't working. How can I write Dear Grandma without D? Just let her be a plain old grandma without the dear. But the letter G isn't working either. It looks like we could use a pack mat here. A pack mat What for? To clean off the keyboard's contacts that got all dirty. What contacts? A key on a computer keyboard works pretty much the same way as a doorbell does. When we press on the button of a doorbell, the contacts inside touch, which lets the electricity flow that makes the bells ring. And when we press a letter on a computer keyboard, an electrical current runs from the keyboard to the computer, and that letter appears on the screen. But if there's dirt between the contacts that stops them from touching, then the current can't flow. Tom Thomas, what did you drop in here that is so sticky? It's probably the soda I was drinking. And so you shared it with the keyboard? Here's the reason why it's not working. Where did so many crumbs come from? Uh, they fell off my sandwich. What in the world is this red stuff down here? That must be the sauce for my mushroom pizza. Oh, no, Lick. Well, now it looks like we're going to be out picking mushrooms. The Fixies are always ready to help people out. But there are some people we really don't feel like helping. I remember when I was working as a Fixie back in one house. It was a disaster. One day, the owner spilled coffee on the remote for the TV. As I was running to clean the remote, he starts pounding the TV with his fist because the channels won't change. So now the TV is broken, too. Well, with no TV, he decides to listen to some music, and he carelessly pulls the music center onto the floor. So he tries to fix that himself and manages to break it for good. And then he sits down on top of his telephone and breaks that to bits. 
Meanwhile, I'm still busy trying to clean the coffee off of the remote. There wasn't a minute of rest with this guy around. In the end, I couldn't take it any longer. So I got out of there. And now I'm here, teaching kids. Tom Thomas, why are you eating food at your computer? Yeah, they don't feed you in the kitchen or something? <sighs> now I know it. It's not allowed. You said it. Now write your message. And write the address on there, too. Uh-huh. Mom, do you know what the email address for Grandma is? Grandma doesn't have an email address. So what? We went ahead and fixed that keyboard for nothing? I still need it. And my Grandma? I'll give her a ring on the phone. You said you had a tradition of writing each other cards. And what? Grandma will be happy to hear my voice. That's some original idea, huh? <laughs> the electric train. Woo -woo, woo -woo. Zoom. Zoom. And suddenly, the Earth is attacked by an alien spaceship. If help arrives here on time, we'll be saved. Move faster, faster. Come on, get off the train. Move it, move it. Tom Thomas, we came here to play. Oh, finally you're here. I need some aliens for this game. What kind of aliens are you talking about? Just plain old aliens. You know the ones. They come destroy the Earth and just about everything. We don't want to destroy anything at all. Why can't we be uh, the train engineers, huh? Train engineers? <laughs> you don't know anything about driving a train. Oh, we know plenty about trains. Humans invented the railroad long ago. But back then, the rails were made out of wood. People didn't start making metal rails until the end of the 18th century. But the first railroad cars had no engines to give them their power. Instead, they used horses to pull them along. Later, horses were replaced by the steam engine. Wood and coal would burn in their furnaces to boil the water in the boilers, making the steam that turned their wheels. And the Fixies were there to help those trains go, making sure all of the parts could work together smoothly. But now steam engines have long gone away. The railroad uses electricity now for its power. These electric trains race along the railway at almost the speed of an airplane. So you might know trains, but you'll still be the aliens. This railroad is mine. So you're gonna play the way I want. The train is unloaded and leaving the station. You can play choo-choo by yourself. And I will. Pew, 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 pew. Hmm. Hey, why did you stop? This doesn't help either. It's not going at all. Simka! No lick. Where are you? Did I hurt your feelings or something? Mom, is Dad going to be home soon? No, is something the matter? We've been attacked by evil aliens. The train has to be fixed right away, or we'll never escape them. Uh, mm-hmm. You want some tea? Ah, I've got to think of something. Simka, Nolik, I know you're in there. Please forgive me if I hurt your feelings. I'm really sorry. There's nobody but you that can save the world from the evil aliens. All right, it talked us back into it. Well, let's go and check the rails. Nolik, follow me. I'm faster. Whoa! Well, so much for being faster. But it looks like I found the brake. Tom Thomas, the rails are broken. I know, and so? You know, but that's why your train's not running. Just like a real train, model trains run on electricity. 
But there aren't any batteries inside the locomotive to pull the other cars. The engine gets its electricity from the rails. Each piece of the rail has a wire in it. If the rails come apart, the electricity can't flow through the track and get to the train. And without electricity, the train's engine just stops going. So reconnect the rails and your train will run again. Uh-huh. Put them together. Ah. Yes. Hooray! The train's running. Way to go. So will you play with me now? And which way are we playing this time? Whatever you want, I'm with you. The train rushes down the track with Nola as its engineer, when suddenly from out of the sky comes an alien spaceship. Greetings to you, O people of planet Earth. I come from far away, from another galaxy. Have you come to destroy everything? No, I've come to fix it all. Oh! Candy. Nice black eye. Tom Thomas, did you fall? How did you hurt your eye? I had a big fight with Johnny. Oh, wow! How could you? What was the fight about? We argued over who's cooler, a racer or a boxer. A race driver's cooler. Of course! That's what I said to him. But Johnny had to prove it's a boxer. Well... He proved it all right. Can't you see? You don't prove anything at all by fighting. What a profession. A boxer. Yeah! Now your dad, he's got an amazing profession. A journalist. He gets to travel to different countries and brings back all sorts of funny stuff. They even show them on TV. No. What do you mean? Boxers are cooler. Everyone's really afraid of them. Don't be gloomy, Tom Thomas. Have a candy. I've got a good idea. How about a taste tester? That's the best job. And what is he testing? A taste tester is someone who tests the tastes of drinks and food. Yeah, how come? They want to find out if the food is delicious and what all the flavors are in it. Super! What a great profession! But a taste tester is not a job just anyone can do. I can do it. Then let's check. So open your mouth and then close your eyes. what the flavor is inside of this piece of candy. Mmm, strawberry. That's right. Good job, Tom Thomas. And this? That tastes like orange. You missed that one. It was lime. Yeah, Tom Thomas. If you want to be a food taster, you're going to need to do some serious practicing. Let's do it. Raspberry? You got it! Simka, how do they get the candy to be hard on the outside and filled with liquid on the inside? Don't get distracted, you're training! Yeah! Hard candy is made like this. First, a sweet syrup is cooked until it is thick and stretchy. Then the mixture is pulled into long, hollow tubes that are like noodles. As the tubes cool down, they start getting harder. And it's right then that the tubes are filled with the soft, fruity center and then cut into pieces. It all has to be done quickly before the tubes have a chance to get totally hard. And that's how candy is made that is hard on the outside and soft on the inside. It could be strawberry, only I just can't tell anymore. Ouch! What's wrong? My tooth. Was I hearing things? Or did someone yell? Mm. Oh, I got it. Come on, let's take a look at your tooth. A taste tester has to be the most delicious profession in the world. 
They taste all sorts of things like cheeses and chocolates and decide which ones taste better. Everything is tested for taste, even water, because different waters taste differently. There are also testers who don't test food and drinks, but rather they test the smells of things like deodorants or perfumes. Not everybody can become a really great tester. First, you have to be able to tell apart all the different tastes and smells. You also need to know when it's time to stop, or you can make yourself sick and lose your ability to tell things apart. That's the reason why taste testers only take very small bites of food and very, very little sips. If you're gonna have a bad tooth, it's good to have a mom who's a dentist. That's true. She's a good dentist. She'll fix it in no time. She'll pull that tooth right out. So, did she pull it out? Nah, she just gave me some medicine to gargle. Your tooth, does it hurt? Yeah, it hurts a little. Hey, now I definitely know who's cooler than a boxer. Who? Who else? A dentist. Even boxers are afraid of going to the dentist. The aquarium. The coast is clear. The humans have left. Come on, let's go. Masia, why are the fish looking so tired? Because they're not getting enough air in there. The water in the aquarium is dirty and it needs air, but the filter isn't working. The filter? Yes, that device over there. These fish need our help, and if we don't do something right now, they could die. Right. First, I'll fix that light while you and Masia go over there and see what is wrong with the filter. But I want to go and look at the filter, too. You're too small for this. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. And you're a giant. I mean, you're like six feet tall, huh? That's enough arguing. Nolik, let's go. Well, let's check it. Not working. Nolik, where are you? I'm up here. What are you doing up there? Nothing. Holding on. We don't have time for that. Get down. We have to get this switch working. Masia, what's the matter with the filter? Well, probably something's caught inside and it's stopping the motor from turning. A filter is used to keep the aquarium water clean. A motor in a filter turns the paddles and pumps water through a fine net or a sponge. The dirt in the water gets trapped in there and the cleaned water is put back into the aquarium. Many filters not only clean the water, but also add air to it, so there will be more oxygen in the water. You see, even though fish live their lives in water, they need oxygen just like all of us. of ways for people to breathe underwater. As an experiment, try putting an empty glass upside down in water and you'll see that some of the air stays in there. That's the idea behind the ancient diving bell. An empty bell was lowered under the water and some of the air remained in there for the diver to breathe. And about 200 years ago, the first diving suits were invented. 
the diver got air from a hose that started above the water. This let the diver spend a long time under the water, and even walk around on the bottom, but just not too far. Later on, people learned to squeeze a lot of air inside of metal tanks, and that's when scuba diving started. Scuba divers breathe the air stored in these tanks, so they can swim freely, and even dive deep down below the water. Our work is done. The light is on, and the filter is working. And the fish look so exciting! As if they're not fish, but monsters. Thank goodness they're behind glass. <gasps> Papus! Just hang on! We'll be right there to save you! <sighs> but I don't even have my pack -a -mat. Ooh, look how they're chopping their teeth! They must be so hungry! You're right! They're hungry! Nolik, come on! Fish. They're so ungrateful. We went ahead and fixed their filter, and all they wanted to do was gobble us up. And I'm the one who saved you from them. I was the one watching what was going on. <gasps> oh, gee. Hold it. Do you think giving her some uh, food will help? As long as you're not thinking that food is me. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. The spare part. What's going on? It was just working. Hi there, Tom Thomas. Simka Nolik. Look, I've got a Sorry, problem. Sorry, no time to play. We're busy. Busy? With what? We got put in charge here for the day. We even get to use one of the Pagamats. Papus and Masia went out to visit our fixie friends. Papus used to be with them at the Space Center years ago. Ever since he was a boy, Papus dreamed of going into space. And why not? Fixies work on rockets, too. He even got a job at the astronaut training center. He was put in charge of the centrifuge, and he made sure it worked perfectly. The centrifuge is a sort of very fast carousel for training astronauts. And Papus trained inside of it, too. Unfortunately, Papus never knew the rocket was scheduled to fly on his day off. And when he found out, it was too late, and the rocket blasted off without him. Since then, Papus hates his days off, but he still longs to fix something like that centrifuge. You know, something turning around like a washing machine. Too bad for Papus that the one in his house seems to keep working perfectly fine. So that means today you fix everything? Uh-huh. Well then, it's your lucky day, because my car just broke down. Hooray! We've got work to do. Nolik, let's go! Well, what broke down here? Wait a sec. Here, this part burned out. It's all covered in black. I wonder where we can get the same part, but a clean one. A clean one? Hmm. <gasps> Nolik! Genius! There's the same exact part inside the dishwasher. We can take it from there. Come on! Do you have any idea how all these parts are connected to one another? With this thing right under you. It's a special part called a circuit board. A circuit board's made like this. First, the board gets covered with a thin layer of metal. Then, paths are laid onto the board where the electricity is going to flow. After that, all of the extra metal is washed off of it with a special cleaning liquid, leaving the metal paths that were drawn on the board. These paths work just like wires to connect the parts on the board to each other. And then all that's left to do is attach those parts to their places on the paths. Pull it! Tanish! Tom Thomas! Tanish! Hooray! It works again! Tom Thomas! I'm about to start the dishwasher. 
Are there any dirty dishes in your room? Nah. Slow down. Slow what down? Slow down your mom. We took the new part out of the dishwasher, see? Mom, wait, don't start it. You need to put, put, yeah, put in this one uh, dirty cup. Nolan, follow me. Inside the TV's the same part. Now back to the dishwasher. <sighs> we barely made it. We grabbed the part from the TV in the living room. Not the TV. Uh, my mom's favorite program is about to start. <gasps> ah! <sighs> the television is working now. And where'd you get the part for it? From your dad's computer in his office. Hi, everybody. I'm home. Hi, hon. Are you ready for dinner? In a bit. I've got to finish a little work on the computer. Simka, hurry! Where else can we find that part? Stop. That's enough running. Here, take it back from the car. And then, we put the part back into the computer and it started working again. Oh, that was really silly. Remember, you little experts, never repair any device at the cost of another one. I understand now. And I understand. If you were smart, you could have taken the part out of the old radio in the closet. Papus, but you know the radio wouldn't work then. That old thing hasn't been working for years. Masia and I have pulled out half of those parts already. The balloon. No way! You'll miss for sure. No problem. Huh. Anybody can do that. But I bet you can't do it if you tried bouncing the ball off the floor first. Just look. Oh, what are my parents going to do to me? Maybe we should call Simka. Simka! And what's Simka going to do to us when she sees this? So, got yourself in trouble, huh? You shouldn't be playing with a ball inside. And now we have your lamp to fix. But how? Only my dad can reach all the way up there. Why just your dad? You have a hot air balloon over there. That doesn't fly. It's just a toy, see? Well, it might be just a toy to you, but for us fixies, it's absolutely real. If an object is lighter than water, it floats up to the surface. And in the same way, if something is lighter than air, it floats upward. Did you know that hot air is lighter than cold air? Well, it is. And that means if you warm up the air in a balloon, it will float up. Hot air balloons use special gas burners to heat up the air inside of them so they will get lighter. And the bigger the balloon, the more people it can take up into the air. I know what you're saying, but where do we get a burner? You think fixies don't have their own burners? Huh. Sure we've got them. Bring it down here, and I'll go talk to our parents. No, no, and no. The human child must never see us. Listen now, Simka. We already don't approve of him seeing you and Nolik. He won't look. Papas, please. You're the one who told us how you dreamed of flying since you trained to go into space. Yeah. For two years I waited on standby, but I never went up. And you've never flown in a hot air balloon either, honey. So let's call it a deal. I talked them into it. There's just one condition. You can't watch. Okay. You can come in now. Now prepare the burner. Coming right up. <gasps> Permission for takeoff? Permission is granted. And off we go. Don't you peek! Turn around! Oh, it was an accident. I'm going to evaluate the damage. Maintaining proper altitude! So, they've reached the spot. Air balloon.
balloons are really awesome. I wonder who figured out how to do that. It was the Montgolfiers. The hot air balloon was invented in the 18th century by the Montgolfier brothers from France. In those days, there were no gas burners, so they heated the air inside the balloon by burning straw. At first, there were no passengers on their balloon. Not counting the fixies, of course. I mean, how else could a balloon get up in the air without them? Unfortunately, the names of the first fixies who took that flight were not recorded in the annals of history. Following the fixies' flight, the next passengers were animals. A ram, a rooster, and a duck. And it was not until those three safely landed after flying a full four kilometers that humans dared to fly in hot air balloons themselves. Ever since their invention, hot air balloons have also gone by another name, Montgolfiers. Hooray! Tadish! Tadish! All right. Simka, please let your parents know that I'm so very thankful. Okay. By the way, now you can turn around. You know, Simka, let's fly the balloon just like them. There's no way, Nolik, we would need to use the burner, and kids aren't allowed to play with fire. I'll give you a ride. Look, I still need to put it back up on the shelf, so climb in and let's do it. The screws. Hey, Tom Thomas, what you thinking about? Huh? For school, I have to write an essay. My very best friend. I don't know, who should I write about? What do you mean, who? Aren't I your closest friend? Of course. How could I forget to write about you? And you can keep forgetting. That's our secret, right? Don't you remember the promise you made when we met? Hmm. Sure, how could I forget? What's wrong with Chusaka today? Chusaka, why are these screws bothering you so badly? What's with you? Leave them alone already. Will you just calm down? You're gonna destroy my plane. Let's get out of here. Ow! What's going on? <gasps> What's going on? Hey, if you don't turn back again, I'm not letting you go. Oh, please, don't be afraid. I'm not gonna hurt you two. I'll just ask you one question and let you go. <sighs> Nolik, we can't. Don't worry about it. Quit your staring. Ask your question, boy. No way you can talk. Just, just, just tell me, who are you? Fixies! That's all. We answered. Now you let us out. Oh, wait, but what's it mean that you're Fixies? That's already question number two. You promised to let us out, didn't you? I'm sorry. You can leave now. Simka, it's fine. I can see from his look that we can trust him. Uh, all right. We'll tell him. You gotta swear that you don't tell anyone else. I swear it. Fixies. We're the little people that live inside of machines and appliances and take care of them. Fixing them, cleaning them, and oiling them. Humans never suspect us. They think that if something breaks and then suddenly starts working again, that it happened all by itself. Well, nothing happens by itself. It happens because we, the Fixies, are living inside. Yes, without the Fixies, humans would have so many more problems with their machines. 
awesome. And so what are your names? That's already question number three. You can call me Nolik, and her name is Simka. And my name's Tom Thomas. Will you come back over? Oh, well. Uh, I was this close to becoming the first kid in the whole world to make friends with the Fixies. I thought you guys would never come back over. And we didn't plan on coming back. But then we thought it'd be really great to be the only Fixies in the whole world who are friends with the only kid in the whole world who is friends with the Fixies. Ah! <gasps> and who has told no one about us. The Fixies do everything they can do to hide from humans. They are afraid that if humans discovered Fixies, they would hunt them down and capture them and start keeping them in cages just like pets. And worse than that, they would take them into their laboratories and start examining them under microscopes, even conducting scientific experiments on them. Or suppose that humans thought we'd do all their work for them, and so they decided that they didn't have to take care of their appliances any longer. Well then, let me tell you this. If humans decided that they didn't have to clean or fix their own appliances, then not even the Fixies will be able to stop them from breaking no matter what they do. That's why the Fixies are very smart to hide from humans. Okay, then, I'll write about someone else. I have the very best friend ever. Period. When something's broken, he repairs it. He's the one and only Noel. The one and only Nolan. 